referee is Lorenzo Fortunata of Argentina. The judges are Carlos Hoppen of Argentina, Harold Letterman, New York City, Armadio Cedeno of Panama. The judges will do all the scoring. The referee will not have a vote. It is an 18-foot ring inside, and we're in round number one. The champion with a record of 16-1, and one, certainly a courageous fellow with Luis Spada. They won the championship in Tokyo. They have defended it four times, and they have defended it on the road each time. So obviously he is a very confident champion, and he goes right at Joey Olivo early in the moments of the first round. The humidity and the heat is staggering inside this building. It is sort of an open-air building where the breeze can circulate, but I'll tell you now, it, it brings out here, it's got to be right around 100 degrees, maybe even more than that, and I'm sure you're aware of how high the humidity can be here in Panama. That's a good right hand thrown early in the round and early in the fight by the champion, Zapata. He's in the dark green, with all the lettering there in front, the left-hander, and the challenger, Olivo, wearing the dark velvet trunks with the white stripe. We have two Argentines involved today, the referee from Argentina. Pretty good exchange there in behalf of Olivo. Coming off the rope. It'll be interesting to see whether or not the young man from California, training in a relatively humidity-free circumstance, how well he stands up in the heat here in Panama. There's also some question as to whether or not Zapata might decide to pace himself in the early going and force Olivo to make the fight, but that has not been the case. Zapata has come out rather willing in the very beginning. Joey Olivo sort of got himself with his ability into the position where, one, it was very hard to find anybody to train with. 10, 12 pounds in Los Angeles. He did, however, spend a lot of time working with Albert Davila, whom we saw back in December in a valiant uh, challenge of Luki Pintor. And uh, he credits Davila with helping me a great deal. The corner people for Olivo, Rudy Tellez, and Norman Kaplan, the co-manager, Julio Flores, chief second, the trainer and cut man. Urban Darling is also helping him. Darling involved in the training of Jorge Lujan. We're inside a half minute to go in round number one. The World Light Flyweight Championship, 108 pounds. Both of them made the weight with no problem. The crowd reacting to a bit of a wild story, but nothing in it. of 15 scheduled rounds is now over. Round two, World Light Flyweight Championship, 108. The limit. The champion weighed in officially at 107 and the three quarters. But considering the water weight that he's added, that's a part on that rock believer. Great left hook right to his face. Real solid blow of the fight. He's probably up around 10, maybe even 12 at the call for the bell. Olivo, on the other hand, has no trouble staying under a 108. In fact, uh, has to eat pretty hard of it to get up to 107. Makes him one of the marbles of this time. Zapata is quite compact. Really doesn't seem to waste a lot of energy. You don't want to for that matter. Left of the head uh, was picked off by Olivo, but the right left of the body got home for the champion. Just under 5'8". Zapata won his championship on March 24 of 1980. Defended it in Korea. Defended it in the Rockets. Again, Nakajima. And Becerra in the Rockets in December. On his way to Korea for the defense against Shubak Kim, he stopped 
off in Los Angeles to catch up on the time zone and do some training, and he worked out at that point with Oliva. Joey doesn't come in really cold against the champion. He knows something about him. Right hand by Olivo, just a little short as the champion moved away. A little bit of an abrasion under the left eye of Olivo here in the second round. twice of any consequence in his career. His only loss was to Marcus in Santiago, Chile. yesterday. He had to get off first. He was concerned about taking some of the ring away from Zapata, who has good movement. But he hasn't had to worry about that. The champion's been coming right to it. You see the compact style of Zapata now? He was inside defensively able to nullify the rather looping effort by Olivo. But the champion is going right to it. Oh, so you won't have to look for this one. Olivo gets him two lefts to the face there, forcing the champion to miss with his left. Olivo with about a four and a half inch advantage in reach, but it hasn't helped him so far. Thank you. 
Marco in the last couple of minutes now starting to go a little more straight at him. Perhaps looking to get a little more leverage. Marco. Joey's wild. Shows the champion in that exchange. Working 
explosion got up there. The blood uh, really wasn't that obvious. It did not seem to impede the champion in any sense. I'm frankly surprised that uh, the champion had just absolutely made the fight, refusing to let Joey Olivo have any opportunity to get something going on his own. And he's been struggling with a very heavy abrasion under the left eye with some swelling since the second round. But he, Olivo, has not been able to get off in front of the champion yet. But this is scheduled for 15. It's got to be at least 100 degrees in the ring. Who knows what may happen between here and 15. Pace a little slower at the beginning this time. That left hand for the champion picked off by Oliva, but the right hand got home to the challenger's jaw. Oliva's the one in the long trunks with the white stripe down. Joe is not able to get it. Seemingly very confident. As I said at the very beginning of the fight, he must be a confident boxer because his first four defenses were all away from home. You go to Japan, Korea, Venezuela a couple of times, you're not always sure that uh, you're going to get a call on a close fight. He knocked out Nakashima in the second meeting after he had defeated him for the championship, but the other three defenses all went 15 rounds. Coming up on the halfway point, round six. Pata seems extremely confident now. Trying to pick his spots. Left to the head, left to the jaw. Right pops in the face of the Leo. Boy seems frustrated. Goes hard to the body, Olivo did, and got it there. Champion pops the right hand into the face of the challenger again. Pace is slower. So you could not go 15. I don't care how well conditioned they are. They couldn't go 15 like they were wailing away at each other in the second, third, and fourth rounds. They have got to slow the pace a little bit. To say it again, the thing that's most impressive in the fight right now is the absolute confidence of the champion. So far. We'll go to round seven, scheduled for 15. Where I'm sitting, I feel the champion has taken control of the fight and is steadily building a solid foundation for a successful defense. Unless Olivo can find some way to one penetrate the defense, and probably the best way for Joy to do that is just simply make up his mind to throw the first punch.
Levo digs the right hand to the body that time and got it there. That's the second time he's been able to score with a hard right to the body. The champion comes back from that flurry with the left of the jaw. The champion has up to this juncture thrown the greater number of punches and landed the greater number of punches. escaping most of the force of the left hand thrown by the champion. Olivo has eight knockouts in his uh, 27 fights. Zapata, six knockouts in his 16 fights. Right to the face, hard left to the body by Zapata. Back he goes, same routine, and then flashes the right back into the face of Oliva. Every time Oliva seems to set up and get ready to go with a series, the champion beats him to the punch. Mouse under the right eye of Olivo. A hefty abrasion under the left. Some swelling. with our satellite transmission. The picture's a bit less than we'd like it going into the stage in New York. We're scuffling with it. We'll try to get it as clean as we can. We're in round eight. 108 pound world boxing council's world light flyweight championship title held by Hilario Zapata. On the right hand side of your picture, Joey Olivo is the number two ranked challenger and the one man that Zapata's people admitted they really didn't want to take on. Germán Torres of Mexico is the number one contender in this division. So the winner of this fight is going to have 30 days to negotiate and 90 days in which to defend against Torres. Brutally warm inside the gymnasium. Olivo getting a right and a left of the side of the head of the champion, but neither blow seemed to have a whole lot on it. sitting in his corner, challenger, puffing a little bit at the end of that eighth round. The champion's corner, suggesting he might think about an overhand attack. Let's see if he does. Right now, he really doesn't need it. His pace is adequate. Certainly, he has the edge in points on a 10-point plus scoring system for the winner of the round. Olivo just does not seem to be able to cut it loose and get there first. Bit 
while there. But I think it's very obvious to you as you watch the fight that Tapata is in control and confident about things. Flat-footed that time, and Olivo found him. He goes back to the body. That was almost low. Mr. Fortunato breaking them. Got a good official. We hardly noticed him. Gets wild there, but gets away from the right hand by Olivo. We come down to the end of round nine. chasing him because it is the old rule of thumb the foundation philosophy that if a challenger wants a championship he's got to go after it that has not been the case the champion has certainly not been very hard to find see referee fortunato stepping in and say let's pick it up a little pick it up a little there's a right and a left of the champion's head by Olivo. Both landed with some authority. stronger. He's got to. If he is to have a chance. There's that right hand back into the face of Joy. Olivo now beginning to throw more punches than the champion, but Zapata picking his spots, getting a lot of them home, like that right to the side of the head. I saw champion back 
back to his corner. He looks fairly fresh. There's a little bit of a leak on that cut over the eyebrow, and there's Eusebio Pedroza that we'll be seeing next week against Patrick Ford in the WBA Featherweight Championship. Good-looking young man, and with tremendous promise for the future. The WBA title in his pocket right now. There's your champion, Hilario Zapata, working in his corner on him, and across the way, Joey Olivo, getting the administrations of Julio Flores, Norman Kaplan, and Rudy Tellez. We've invited Duran to come over and visit with us, talk about whatever he'd like. He doesn't want to. It's his privilege. I understand that he has sold some of his story to a New York City newspaper. Well, I guess eventually you'll hear more about the Leonard Duran fight. And the attendant aftermath. There's some conversation that Duran is to be matched. At least they're trying to work it out with Maurice Hope. see at home that we're having some difficulty with the satellite. That bird's a long way up. It's sometimes difficult to find out exactly where the bug is. Pace is slowed. Actually, the first eight, in the eighth round, I thought Zapata slowed his pace somewhat. He had been on a rather furious pace through five of the first six rounds. Started picking his spots a little bit. Started loading up a little bit more. Look for a time in round 10 that Olivo might come on, but just not able to do it. to the body of the challenger by the champion. Comes back to the head, he's wild. Olivo with his back to you there. Right pops to his face. He still has good vision, however, out of that left side. It was bruised back in the second round. time Oliva again tries to set himself and go to a series that the champion just beats him off the mark and he's ruined almost every one of them. And Zapata has this fight in hand right now, no question about it. There's that left to the head. He goes to the body, goes to the head, got them both there. to go, the champion trying to get a run going as he was able to go to the body, go to the head, and then back to the body. Zapata is giving some territory in the ring now, but as he is giving it, he is scoring. And we've gone through 11. All right, we're back in Panama, Frank. Thank you very much. And we're heading into round number 12. I'm going to be looking for the first bucket of water to jump into when this is over. All right, the champion in control of the fight as they come out. He comes out for really the first time without landing the first blow of the round. Roberto Duran has not come over to sit down with us and we'll visit with him in between rounds. Olivo flicks the right to the face. Champion backs up, gets away from it. Joey's been a little more precise here over the last couple of rounds than he was in the early going. is quick and he is compact. He's not wasting a lot of energy when he goes to his target. He stings Oliva. And that 
that sore area under the left eye and that ties him up. We'll be talking with Roberto Duran and at the end of this round. Luis Enriquez will be our interpreter. See the champion go to the body, go to the head, go to the body. He doesn't just settle for combinations, he likes to throw three. weary now. Perhaps it's frustration. Less than a minute to go in round 12. Zapato on the other hand composed and seems fresh. Again a reminder we'll talk with Roberto Duran just at the end of this round very briefly. Hope, the super welterweight, junior middleweight title holder. They're talking about a bout for Duran with him. Champion closing to ask Mr. Duran. In the fight with Leonard, how much pain was there and why he did not go ahead and fight with pain? Dice que ya que tú le dijiste que tenía un dolor, más o menos qué clase de dolor tú tenías cuando peleaste con Leonard? Bueno, fue un dolor de barriga que me pegó, ¿no? Se me, cal se me calumbró el estómago. It was a stomach ache and my, and I got, uh, me dolía, no me dejaba respirar, no podía I could not breathe and the pain was intense and I could not breathe properly. Did the circulation or the pain cut off circulation? Could he not raise his arms and hands? Yes, I could not breathe properly. And I continued to feel weak and weak. Was it a virus? He doesn't know. What about the fight or the possibility of a fight with Maurice Hope? Existe sobre la pelea con Mauricio. Bueno, yo no sé nada, todavía no me han dicho nada. Up until now, I don't know, I don't know anything at this moment. Thank you. If we go back to round 13. We'll talk to Roberto in a couple of minutes if we will stay with us. But he's going to leave us, so he's gone. But again, to reiterate, it appears there's some possibility that he will have an opportunity. Or in fact, he's on record as saying he wants to resume his career, and Hope is the man that they'd like to match him up with. I don't know if Hope wants to have any part of it. That is yet to be determined. Right now, it is Joy Olivo pursuing the World Light Flyweight Championship. And so far, all he has done is pursue it. He has not really moved it on the shelf as yet. obvious to you, I'm sure, that in the final 30 seconds of each round, the champion has been the stronger, and now you see that right and the left, and the right and the left, and the champion marching toward his challenger. Herman Torres of Mexico is the top-rated contender at 108 pounds. As of Monday, they have 30 days in which to negotiate Torres and the winner of this fight, and then 90 days to put it on. This has been, from the second round on, Zapata's dance. He's got Oliva on the ropes. He 
gets a little wild with it. And Joey slips away, but now in the center of the ring, Olivo is taking punishment. He's hurt and he's tired. Venture to guess the temperature's got to be 100. We're wondering about the factor of fatigue and why Joey might be suffering a little from it. I don't know if it's the heat and humidity that's been his big problem, though. I think Delario Zapata is his big problem. Zapata's going after him. He's trying to get him here in 13. But it looks like Joey may be able to escape it. So far, this has been the most one-sided round of the fight. Olivo's corner has said, that's it. The fight is over. After 13 rounds, Olivo couldn't answer the call for 14, and Valerio Zapata has defended the WBC World Light Flyweight Championship for a fifth consecutive time. Suddenly, there was a eruption of joy from the huge crowd as Olivo's corner turned and said, that's it. Round 13 was very very lopsided, and it became painfully clear that Joey Olivo had just simply run out of gas, and Hilario Zapata, a very strong outing in front of his countrymen in Panama City, continues as the WBC 108-pound champion, and he was totally dominant, very dominant. Round number one might very well have been called even, but from that point on, it was all Zapata, and you look into the corner, you see an exhausted Joey Olivo. Here's the scoring by the judges for Zapata. Up in 129-121, Letterman 127-121, and Cedeno 129-120. Most decisive outing for the champion, Valerio Zapata. Why did he just go right at the challenger? Why did he not let the challenger come to him? Bueno, porque yo soy el campeón, él es el retador, él tiene que buscarme, pero yo viendo que no quería buscar mi pelea, yo tuve que presionarlo y me estaba huyendo ya que él decía que me iba a noquear. I am the salir. champion. I allowed him to come and look for me, to look for the title. When I noticed that he wasn't doing that, I decided to take the fight to him. What's next? Después de esto que sigue. Bueno, no sé, todo eso depende de mi apoderado, Luis Epa, que me está llevando muy bien. Él tiene la última palabra. I don't know at the moment, but my manager, Mr. Luis Espada, has the last word on whatever he says I'll do. Why has he been so willing to make the first four defenses away from home? Why wait so long to come home? ¿Por qué decidiste de pelear las cuatro primeras defensas fuera de Panamá? Bueno, yo soy un boxeador de, de pelear por fuera. Yo nunca me acostumbro a pelear solamente en mi patio. Yo me siento agradable de pelear en mi patio puesto que nunca me habían visto pelear título pero yo peleo donde me busquen y donde me den plata I fight any place I am a boxer of fighting internationally I'll fight anybody any place but this fight was great for me because my people have never seen me fight or defend my championship in Panama and to me it was a great pride to fight and win in Panama Evan Torres of Mexico is the number one contender Torres of Mexico the WBC has said they must fight in 90 days. Torres es el contendor número uno de México. Según las reglas del consejo, tú debes pelear con él adentro en 90 días. Te quieren saber si es eso así. Bueno, yo le estoy diciendo que todo eso depende de mi apoderado, pero si ellos quieren pelear conmigo y me toca pelear con ellos, yo estoy dispuesto a pelear porque esta es mi profesión. All that, my manager handles that. But if I have to fight him within 90 days, I'll fight him anyhow.